The 6.5 is live at CES 2024 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's been an amazing show so far. And I think the headline is really about AI, whether it's AI PCs, uh, AI in cars, AI in gadgets, I mean, AI in pretty much uh, everything. I have to tell you, uh, I've never seen this much excitement around the PC market. It's pretty incredible. Uh, I've been in, in and around the PC industry over, over 30 years, and, and it's interesting to see the different uh, inflections that, that go in here. And some of the key technologies to get in there, the, the technologies that get probably the, the biggest highlight are things like the CPU and the GPU, but here, here's the reality, and I've said this many times, you have to have the right memory and storage to make a more balanced system. And quite frankly, because of the tightly coupled nature now of CPU, GPU memory, you have to have a lot of integration not only at the logical layer, but the physical layer too. It has to actually fit in the devices. Uh, one of the leaders that we've had on the show uh, here is, of course, Micron. And Micron is a leader in the next generation of PC memory form factors. Praveen, welcome to the 6.5. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much. I completely share the excitement <laughs> that you are uh, seeing in CES. You know, we've all been coming here for several years. I know. But this year, I have to admit, there's excitement at the show floors, there's excitement in conversations, even in the evenings, you know, I feel like the art of the possible has been redefined this totally. year through CES. Well, totally, and, and it's interesting, if you've been in the industry for a long time, which, which you and I both have, we see cycles kind of come and go, and when I first got into the industry, you know, the first uh, PC browsers, uh, multimedia with DOS uh, were, right. were the thing, and then we saw um, uh, sub one thousand dollar PC. Uh, we saw desktop uh, to notebooks, and then a lot thinner notebooks. Right. And but every step of the way, memory has had to transform uh, itself. And I got up on stage three days ago at, at an Intel event, actually, and and I said we are going to see a super cycle in the back half of twenty twenty four maybe first half 25, where we're going to see a, I believe, uh, I mean, I'm basing my analyst firm uh, reputation on this, a uh, huge growth uh, in these PCs. So I'm super excited about this category. Yeah, and you know, we've all watched the event that you conducted a, a few days back, and it's fantastic. It's nice to have industry leaders on stage talking about it. And you know, we always talk about what comes first. Is it the application or the technology? Right. And I think we are in an interesting spot where the technology has progressed, the application is coming right. in. It's a beautiful intersection uh, that should deliver what we are all trying to do is improve experiences exactly. for us. So uh, from your vantage point, what are you seeing as some of the key trends in the, in the PC market today? Yeah, uh, maybe I, let me throw back maybe four years yeah. and start from there. I mean, the PC industry has been around for a long time. You've been a part of it. So four years is a very small time in the PC industry, but it feels like it's been a very important four years from our yes. perspective. We all hit 2019, we went into the pandemic, our lives changed, but also what happened is the PC that was always a very essential part of how we live took on a new life, yes. right? We were at home, whether you're working from home, productivity became important. If you're spending a lot of time with your family, people are playing games at home, multiple PCs, experiences have changed. Even if you look at from content creation, massive amounts right. of content on social media being generated that didn't happen, and all happening with the PC as one of the key edge devices. Right, and so I think that was a really interesting inflection. Um, and that, if I, look, if I look a couple of years later, last year was the age of generative AI, but very much from a cloud and uh, you know, enterprise perspective, right. right? And we've seen how that has changed all our lives. And we see that now transitioning into more of the edge devices like phones and PCs. And it's amazing how, as you talked about in the forward to this discussion, is how these applications are coming to the edge. Right. And given the essential nature of the PC already in our lives, AI on top of that just adds a new level of experience that's just going to drive the paradigm on creativity, on productivity, and how we all exist. I think that's a trend over the last four years. I think it's almost like 20 years of change compressed 
into four years. Yeah, it was funny. I remember 15 years ago, there were people saying that the PC was dead. Right, right. Uh, but the reality is, if you look over the span of 30, 40 years, yeah. technology is additive. Right. We very rarely, I mean, mainframes are, have actually increased in MIPS every year for the past 40 years, right? right? Uh, it's not that we're not doing cloud, it's not that we're not doing on-prem, it's not that we're not doing smartphones, tablets, and we're doing it all, right? right. Uh, and it's exciting. It, the irony though, uh, form factors of memory, uh, the, the devices have changed certainly, right. but the form factors of how you get the memory in there haven't changed a lot, and you are a big backer of uh, a new standard that I'd love for you to, in layperson's term, what is LPCAM, LPCAM2, right. why, why does it matter and why is it relevant? Okay, so I think you talked about, we talked about the evolution of the PC, all these use cases. In today's modern world, there are typically two types of memory form factors that gets used. One is you take a memory and you just put it down on a motherboard, right? right? Simple, uh, it serves a very unique purpose that it allows you to build the thin and right. light notebooks, good battery life kind of solutions. The other solution is a little bit more modular, which is called the small outline DIM, right. and that's been around for 25 years. Right, we talked about that in the green room, even when I was in the PC industry, right. that, that started. That's, that's, I was in my 20s, by the way, right. so right. pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we won't talk about <laughs> age in this discussion. Um, but um, it's but also it's evidence that it's a very robust form factor, right? There's been a lot of innovation. We've gone through multiple generations of DDR1, 2, 3, 4. Right. Now we're at DDR5. Technology scales, technology scales, and we still build faster, lower power products. So it's right. been a robust form factor, yes. right? But it served its purpose, mm -hmm. right? There are people who love the SODMs. There are use cases that love just solder down, low power DRAM. Uh, on a PC, what this new form factor does, which is an industry standard, which is called LP CAM, stands for, it's kind of a little bit of an alphabet soup, but it's low power compression attached memory module. There we go. Well, um, listen. JEDEC doesn't get paid to come up with the best names, but the best technologies. That's right. And, That's but right. I think that works, right? It, it, it works. It does, it does come off the tongue, LP CAM. <laughs> right, so. there we go. Yes. yes. Say it a few times. <laughs> um, so LPCAM is a new standard that basically takes the benefits of a small outline DIM along with the benefits of low power DRAM and puts it together into a new solution. Right. Uh, and a lot of innovation has gone around it, right? On working with standards bodies, all of, the entire industry has to align on a yes. new standard, right? And By that the way, takes a all while. All the other moving pieces, they're all moving at the same time. Correct. Right? CPU architectures, GPU architectures, store. I mean, right. it's all moving at the same time as you have to do this. Right. Right. So you are you are starting, right. but you are looking ahead multiple <laughs> years when it has to come to fruition. Right. right. So it's pretty cool, the industry did come together and recognize the need for a solution like this, which resulted in the low power CAM2 solution, which uh, it's again a lot about timing, right? I think it comes in at a time mm -hmm. that it's going to be very valuable for other application space that we are seeing. But it's 25 years, right? Uh, yes. That uh, it took us to go come up with this uh, solution, but I think the timing is fantastic. So. I think it's important for the audience to understand what it takes to bring something like this to market. Right. And sometimes you might think, well, if it's been 25 years, the people who did it the first time, right. they're, they might be retired or something. <laughs> like, how, how, what does it take to bring something like this to fruition across the industry? Yeah, so the first I think we talked about briefly is there's got to be alignment across all the industry players, all the memory uh, suppliers, the PC, makers, right. right? Everybody's got to align from a manufacturing perspective also, right? right? Everybody who builds these PCs is part of this conversation. Competitors too. Competitors yes. too, yeah, yeah. This is a perfect case of you're doing the right thing for the industry. Right. Right, so they have to come together, define the specs, define the standards and align, right? That's what kicks it off. But I also think a big part of it is, from a Micron perspective, it's about the engineering innovation that goes to go deliver something like this, right? right? It's about, 
first of all, technology scaling. You want to make sure you're on a leading edge technology that gives you the performance and the speed. Then it's about design and architecture, right? right. How do you do that correctly? Then it's about building the form factor. And anytime you have a new form factor, you have to reimagine testing, right? What is the test hardware required? Right. What is your throughput that's going to be? So you have to reimagine a lot of things. But the final and I think the most important piece of bringing any new innovative memory solution to the market is use cases and customers. I mean, it always has to come down has to, to it. Come Otherwise, down. it's technology for technology's sake. Correct. So what are some of the black and white benefits between, I mean, getting people to do something new, right? There has to be some real big benefit out there. Well, yeah. What are the, the benefits of, of to customers? Yeah, you know, we think of it as four main benefits. And every time I talk about this, people you, you usually talk, look at me and go, what took you so long? <laughs> right. Right, because it just seems obvious that you would go do this. But it, it takes innovation, right? It takes, and it, the timing has to be right, technology has to progress. So one of the biggest benefits that we see, and I'll compare this to the two existing solutions, right? Like single out, uh, small outline modules and LP uh, components that are on a board. So compared to uh, small outline modules, which basically uses DDR5, this uses low power DRAM, mm -hmm which has about two to three higher speed grades than DDR5. Okay. So you immediately get a bandwidth Performance bump. boost. Performance boost. Yes. In yeah. fact, the products that we are releasing today, in a single PC, you're going to get up to 120 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Right. Right. Imagine that in terms of what your applications need, and when you run into memory-bound applications, it's, it's the solution you need. But at the same time, what our customers, partners, and you and I as users, you don't want to be running the fastest application and then go have to plug in your laptop every 20 minutes right. Right, to make sure you can work. This actually consumes about more than 60% lower power than the small outline modules because of the DDR5 to the low power DRAM, right? Massive, uh, and as we talk about AI PC, if you've been walking around oh, the floor, yes. people want performance, but everybody wants lower power, right? If you look at NPUs, one of the benefits is more efficient AI usage and lower power consumption, and that's the same benefit that we get with this solution. The third is size, right? Uh, you want to get performance, you want to get lower power, but you want to save your space. You want to save your space to maybe put bigger batteries, yes. or just bring yes. smaller, laptops that you can carry around, right? So this gives you the benefit. It's about more than 60% smaller than an existing small outline solution out there. And the final thing is that that low power DRAM, when it's soldered down, your ultrabooks and thin and light, what they didn't have was modularity. Mm -hmm. You could not buy a PC that has low power DRAM and then go out later and upgrade it, right? You had to get a new PC. Now with the modular nature of this, you can add additional modules, you can upgrade the capacity, which we think is going to be one of the biggest reasons why this is going to scale up in the industry and in the PC uh, ecosystem. Yeah, the upgradability part, it's funny, it's super important. The people who do do it are typically content creators, gamers, the one doing the highest performance, or quite frankly, somebody who bought low, right. realized that they're, they're thrashing out to storage. Uh, but this whole bandwidth thing with the AIPC coming, I'm glad you brought it up because not enough people are are talking about it. And if I look at the increase in performance of, of a CPU and a GPU and then the bandwidth of memory, they're not on the same slopes, right? right? And, and it sounds like this form factor is helping to narrow that gap and again, get everything aligned perfectly, right? CPU, GPU, NPU, memory, storage. Right. Today, the to address your bandwidth gap on how do you get compute and memory closer. Yes. Today, when we release this product, as soon as it starts getting plugged in, you're going to see a 3x bump right. in bandwidth. Right. So now everybody's got to go figure out how you're going to use it. And I think the applications are there. Right. right? So it's going to be a tremendous boost to close that gap. And we'll continue to drive that further up. So uh, off camera, uh, hidden, uh, I think I see some uh, gadgets here, and I'm wondering if you might be able to uh, flash one of those to the camera. Absolutely, this is my party trick all through CES. <laughs> Do you when normally I, put that in your coat pocket? Yeah, it's in my hands, okay. my palms. When I shake like, my hand, it usually just pops out. out. Oh, I love yeah. that. <laughs> so this is what we are talking about. It's basically our low power cam solution. Um, 
And actually, I should put it up next to what it is replacing. Oh my gosh. Right, this That's is incredible. today two single small outline DIM modules and this is what it's replacing. It's the same capacity, it is much higher bandwidth and lower power. And that's, I think that's the innovation that this new form factor is bringing to the industry. By the way, it says pretty much not everything. One of the three attributes that you talked about, I mean, it's, it's evident and those SO DIM, look, look at that. Right. Like they're just very recognizable. Right. Very impressive. Yeah, it's fantastic. We are, we are excited about it. We are excited yeah. for Micron. Uh, I think um, to the other statement we made, uh, one of the things that being part of the industry, uh, leading in innovation and with partnership with our customers, the most exciting thing is being first to market. With right. This, right. This is going to become ubiquitous. Everybody is going to use this, right? But the proud moment is being the first ones to go deliver to the market and to go establish the baseline of user experience that this is going to create. Well, hey, Micron's been on a roll of being first to market with many things. So, you know, you're setting this expectation for this, but I do have to ask, what is next uh, for LP Cam 2 after uh, PC yep. adoption. I mean, is it different form factors, different markets, things like that? What What are the other applicable uh, ways? Yeah. So in the near term, it's going to be continuing to scale capacity and bandwidth, right? One of the nice things about low power DRAM is it's very stackable. We can increase capacity in the same size very easily. Right. Bandwidth is going to scale year over year, but now that we have this modular form factor, now we are actually looking at any application that uses low power DRAM. Now if you look at the data center, there are use cases evolving where low power DRAM is very useful, again from a power perspective. Yes. There's not enough power in the world to go power all these AI applications in a few exactly. years, right? So low power DRAM now is an interesting option, but when you build servers and hardware, you want to be able to service them you want to be able to right. replace them, right? So now this becomes an interesting option, so we're going to explore some of that. If you look at networking, networking uses a lot of low power, right? Now right. is this an option for some of those applications? And then as I think about edge devices, uh, the PC is one version, mm -hmm. the phones continue to use mobile uh, uh, LP, but all IoT kind of applications, right, as their demand for capacity grows, uh, this is going to be a very interesting option for us to go explore uh, so that all your edge IoT devices could have replaceable memory in there rather than just sort of down memory. So I think uh, it's going to again change the paradigm on how we engage, right? We didn't think it was possible, but now that it is, right. I think some of these applications are going to be focus areas for us to explore. Oh, this is great. Praveen, thank you so much for coming on the 6.5 here at CES. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Pat. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, let's make sure we get an update as, as we get further in. Absolutely. Sounds great. Great. So this is uh, Pat Moorhead signing off for the 6.5 here at CES 2024 in Las Vegas. You heard it here, the future of PC memory form factors. It's exciting and it does everything that uh, the next generation would want. It's, it's all about PPA and PPW and that has always been a good combination to enable anything that's next generation. Uh, please check out all of the programming we did here at CES 2024. Make sure you check out the four hours of contiguous live coverage that we did as well. Hit that subscribe button, take care.